Hi, uh, it's time for another math easy solution here and discuss another curve sketching example and now look at how to graph this one which is e to the power of 1 divided by x. So uh, the first step in, in solving this is basically looking at uh, just a function in general and seeing what inf information we can gather from it. Well this is an exponential function e to the power of 1 divided by x so then this is always going to be greater than uh, zero right here. You can't have this as a negative number. Any number you put in here is always going to be uh, positive. You can see more on exponential functions in the video link below. And also another thing is that it's defined everywhere. This x could be anything except zero. So x is not equal to zero because as you, as you can see you're going to have a one divided by zero which is undefined and that's like uh, you'll have like infinite number on, on this um, power there. So you can't have that, but we can at least find out what the limit as x approaches 0 from the left and right side are. So as x approaches 0 from the left side of this uh, f of x, well, oh, I'm not going to put an equal sign here. This is the same thing that's kind of saying you're, you're plugging in 0, but for a negative uh, version of 0. So let's put e to the 1 over so it's a negative zero, and then then you could flip this over. This would just be because it's going to be a, a number close to zero, but not zero. I'm putting these arrow marks to show that we're not equating it. it we're just this is just an easy way to uh, illustrate this in your head. So now this one will be because it's a power, it's a negative. You could put it down here. So one over zero, and now this is going to be well, same thing as e to the infinity at the bottom. And then one divided by an infinite number. That's just this is the same thing as one infinity, and then it goes to zero. You're dividing as one by a really large number. It's approaching zero. So then this limit we could write this as equaling to zero. But when we approach from the right side, so when you go x from the right side of zero, of f of x is the same thing as kind of uh, putting in the zero with it's going to be positive now. And now this is the same thing as putting, this is 1 over 0 is, is similar, is the same thing as saying infinity. And then this is just goes to infinity. So then this, uh, this limit is equal to infinity, on the or positive infinity. And also another uh, thing we always have to look at is what is the limit, uh, or what is the function as you approach positive and negative infinity. So when we look at the limit as x approaches uh, negative infinity of this is the f of x right here this is again same thing as writing e to the 1 over uh, negative uh, infinity something like that then we could flip this this is uh, yeah putting arrows again to show this is to illustrate it this doesn't equate because you can't really uh, put in infinity as a number so now what we're going to have now here 1 divided by e to the power of 1 over infinity. We just put this uh, at the denominator because of the, the negative sign. So now this is again, this is going to be equal to 1 over, this is going to be 1 divided by infinity, that's 0. So e to the 0, that's it's the same thing as 1, e to the 0 or any number to the power of 0 is 1. See more on this on power functions in the video link below in their properties. So this is 1 over 1, this is basically 1. So then as negative infinity it goes as it approaches negative infinity, this equals to one. And also when we look at a limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x, again this is the same thing as writing e to the uh, one over infinity. Now it's positive. And again, this is gonna be e to the it's gonna be a zero there, and it's gonna be a one. So the limit at both sides is is equal to one, and this is these are horizontal asymptotes. Yeah, let's write that here, and then this this one uh, will graph these out at the very end. So now another uh, now once we have all the information we can gather from f of x, what we can uh, find now is a derivative and see whether the function is increasing or decreasing. So the derivative of e to the one divided by x. This is going to be well, it's an exponential function. It's going to be the derivative of itself, and now we have to apply the chain rule and find derivative of 1 divided by um, x, that's going to be, well, this is the same thing as writing e to the negative uh, 1 over x. I mean e to the power of x, uh, the power of uh, negative 1, or I'll write, this is the same thing as writing e of x, yeah, x to the power of negative 1 right there, and we could do the chain rule on the top part right here. So this is going to be negative 
and then we could subtract the power, so it to the power of negative 2, or we'll bring it down x2. So this is put this in a bracket right here, or the circle that is not part of this equation. So anyways, this equals this, and we could simplify it further. I'll just write it a bit neater, e to the 1 over x divided by x squared. So now when we look at critical numbers, that's when the derivative is equal to 0 or does not exist. But as you can see from here, the e to the 1 over x is always greater than 0. The x squared is always greater than 0. So you're never going to have a 0. And also, x is not equal to 0. So uh, this derivative is defined everywhere. Um, it exists everywhere where it's defined. Because initially, we found that, that is the derivative, I mean, the x is not equal to 0. It's not defined for the f, f of x. So then the derivative is not defined as well. So we cannot say it does not exist here because there's going to be a divided by zero. So we're not going to have a divided by zero. So it just does not exist. So there are no critical numbers because this is never going to be zeros. These are just positive, positive, and, and x can't be zero. So there is no critical numbers. Yes, yeah, so, since there's no critical numbers, there's going to be no local, uh, yeah, there's going to be no absolute uh, min or max or local min or max, etc. And also we're given here, yes, yeah, since these are both positive, then this is a negative sign. Whatever x is, um, it's it's going to be well less than zero. So then we can we also know that the derivative now is going to be less than zero because it's negative sign and these two are always positive. So then this means it's decreasing everywhere, or uh, decreasing for all x values where x is not equal to zero. So we have now the increasing and decreasing uh, aspect, and, and then we know that's going to be decreasing for everything. Now the next step is to solve for uh, concavity, or I'll just write concavity. So now when we look at concavity, we have to look at the second derivative. So we go write f uh, double prime of x. Yeah, basically we have to solve for this one, and we could use the quotient rule, because as you can see, this one is similar as a quotient. And I'll just write that quotient rule right here. We have y equals f of divided by g, then the derivative is going to be uh, y prime is equal to f yeah, f prime times it by g, then minus f times g prime, all divided by g squared. And you can see the proof of this quotient rule in the video link below. So we'll write that down. Yeah, so then uh, the derivative of f, and in this case, we'll write f as negative e to the power of 1 over x. So we already know the derivative of e to the uh, 1 over x. That's going to be uh, it's itself here. So this derivative is going to be this is the exact thing but with a negative so we cancel the negative so we'll just have e to the 1 over x and chain rule because the number doesn't mean negative initially and that cancels so this is going to be well x squared now times it by g which is just x squared so multiplied by x squared and now we subtract f which is e which is negative e yeah, so it's negative e to the power of 1 over x. So then we have to put a positive here. And then 1 over x. Now we times it by the derivative of g, which is x squared. And that is just 2x. And I'll divide it by x squared and then squared, or g squared. So we go x to the power of 4, where g is x squared. So we have this one here. As you can see, these cancel. And we could uh, take this common denominator out. So we'll, I mean, a common factor out e to the power of 1 of x out of there. These these two cancel. And now we'll be left with well, a 1 plus 2x or a 2x plus 1. doesn't matter how you write it. All divided by x to the 4. So this is our second derivative. And once again, this is, uh, we know that e to the power of 1 over, uh, 1 over x is always greater than 0. x to the power of 4, because it's even, it's always greater than 0. But now this 2x plus 1 this one right here, uh, basically, yeah, 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. When, uh, when basically we solve for this, we get x is equal to negative 1 over 2 right here. So this means that this whole derivative, uh, the second derivative is equal to 0. So f double prime of, well, negative 1 over 2 is equal to 0. So then when we uh, look at what happens at the derivative when it's less than this, we know that when x is less than negative 1 over 2, because these two are positive, they're not going to change a sign. So this is what's basically controlling whether it's negative or positive. So then we'll get basically here f double prime of x when it's less than negative 1 over 2. 
that's going to be really really negative here it's just going to be negative then this is going to be well negative less than zero or concave down so when it's less than zero it's concave down and then when x is greater than negative one over two this is going to be well anything greater than it is just going to be positive because we're going to be adding a one there so then this is going to be let's say, yeah for example you put one i mean negative uh, one right here i mean not negative i mean if you put one it's going to be the two plus one is three, et cetera. Anything greater than this uh, negative one over two is going to be well positive. So then, when this is, yeah, we'll get positive, and then this just means concave up. Yeah, so we have these points now, and also we can solve for what the function uh, f is at these at this point of f one over two of negative one over two. This equals to e to the power of one over negative 1 over 2 this just gets flipped we get e to the negative 2 and this roughly equals 2 if you plug into the calculator 0 0.135 etc so go something like that so now we have all information to graph out our function yeah so here I've uh, quickly drawn the coordinates and also the asymptote right here this is 1 because we know that at infinity our function is gonna go to uh, 1 on on negative infinity or positive infinity so it's going to go approach there. We know that uh, it's not the f of x is not defined at zero, but we also know from above that the limit. Well, I'll scroll back to it. Yes, yeah, so that the limit as we approach zero from the left side is zero. So we just go down here. So the limit as we approach from the left side is zero, and also we know this point at negative one over two right here. This is about. 0.135 and that is well e to the negative 1 over 2 and let's put that there yeah so this is a filled circle this is an open circle meaning it does not actually equal this and we know that from the right side it goes to infinity so it's going to go something like this and then to the basically right of negative 1 over 2 it's going to be concaving up everywhere whenever x is greater it's going to be concaving up and it's be concaving up and as, as you see here it's approaching this asymptote so it never reaches it it goes appro approaching and this is going to infinity right now and then here it's concaving uh, down so it's curving down and then there's going to basically um, yeah basically all the way to inf negative infinity is going to the reaching the asymptote of uh, one right here so it never reaches it but it always gets closer and closer so it looks something like this yeah, and to uh, double check the graph, I've graphed it with Google Graphing Calculator. As you can see here, this is our uh, blue function, e to the power of 1 over x. And as you can see, at 0, it's approach, it's concaving down, I mean concaving up to 0 right here, like this. But then, as you can see, it's concaving back uh, down when this is at the negative 1 over 2 right here. At this point right here, and also, as you see, the asymptote is at 1 on both sides and there's an infinite uh, it's going to infinity on the when it's approaching zero from the right side and then it's just it's going to the right like that so it looks exactly like our function right over here just to confirm that we got it right anyways that's all for today hopefully you learned from this uh, video it's a lot of, just a lot of tedious uh, uh, basic a lot of tedious calculus here but anyways uh, you can also download these exact notes in the link below and thanks for watching stay tuned for another Math easy solution.